All right, welcome to video 17, Lillian Converted to Puerto Rican. So in chapter 16, Skloot ta talks to some of the white and black laxes in Clover. And we really get a sense of how weird and artificial racial boundaries are in America. So in this unit, um, in this module, I'm going to be using this for a launch point to discuss about, to, for talking about the question of race and whether race is real. So sometimes this issue gets called the metaphysics of race. So metaphysics is a term in philosophy. Metaphysics is the study of existence, what existence is and what sorts of things actually exist. What is the world made of? Um, and it turns out when you talk about the metaphysics of race, it, um, you're asking whether race is real. And that raises a whole lot of complicated issues about what exactly it means for something to be real. So the first time this issue comes up is actually in the ladies on the phone chapter, uh, when Skloot is first talking to Deborah, and Deborah is in a fairly manic phase um, and, and so this is what Sklut writes. And suddenly she was talking about her family history, saying something about the hospital for crazy Negroes, which turns out to be the Crownsville facility, and her mother's great grandfather having been a slave owner. We all mixed, and one of my sisters converted to Puerto Rican. One of my mother's sisters converted to Puerto Rican. I stopped for a second. I was like, wait, you can't convert to Puerto Rican. Maybe she just means she converted to Catholicism, right? I mean, you can't just change your race the way you change religion, can you? Well, in this chapter, we learn a bit more about it. Gladys says, Lillian converted to Puerto Rican, she said, holding the letter to her chest. I looked at Gary, who sat beside her. Lillian's skin was real light, even lighter than Mom's, Gary explained. She married a Puerto Rican somewhere in New York, since she could pass, she disowned her blackness, converted to Puerto Rican because she didn't want to be black no more. So a lot of people would say, uh, would use actually the language that Gary uses here. She didn't convert to Puerto Rican. She is just passing as someone who is not black. And certainly the history of race in America is full of black people passing as white people. And more recently, we've heard more stories about white people passing as black people, like in the Rachel Dolezal case. Um, but generally, the public response to this is to say that these people aren't really a different race, right? Uh, Rachel Dolezal pretended to be black in order to get some credibility in the NAACP of Spokane, but she wasn't really black. And similarly, you might say that Lillian may be passing as Puerto Rican, but she's really black. All of that implies that the idea of blackness has a lot of reality to it. And that's a standard response. But you begin to think about other kinds of situations, and the category looks really fuzzy. So, um... The main topic in this section is uh, actually Skloot's conversation with the two different sides of the Lax family in Clover, the white Laxes and the black Laxes. Um, and uh, the black Laxes will, will say, frankly, that they are kin to the white Laxes. Um, the white laxes know their kin is buried here with ours because they family. They know it, but they'll never admit it. They just say, the black laxes, they ain't kin. Um, right? And we know, we know how this kind of history works. Um, slave owner, white male slave owners raped female black slaves. And they had children. And that, you know, that is a uh, omnipresent fact in American uh, reality, race history. So the white laxes say they're not kin, the black laxes say they are. 
this is this is the reaction she gets Sklut gets when she talks to the um, white laxes. When I ask how Carlton was related to the black laxes, she and Carlton was related to the black laxes, they looked at each other from a co coffee table, across the coffee table, like I'd asked if they were born on Mars. My daddy's uncle kept a lot of colored laxes as slaves, Ruby said. That must be where they got their name. Eventually, they took it when they left the plantation. That's the only thing I can figure. So I've got uh, another video to watch after this about another case uh, where, um, um, you know, the complicated genetic history of America creates a, uh, uh, just, just messes with racial categories. And this is, a, this is a town in Ohio, which is populated by people who identify as black, but who look white. Um, and again, that's a product of a similar racial history here, um, in that you're looking at, uh, the, they're all descendants of the same group of owners and slaves. Um, so I, I've got questions about all of these people, um, you know, uh, including what are they really? Are they really kin? So the first question is actually just to drill down and say, just be sure that you understand the, the family history here and who's telling the truth when they say the black and white laxes are kin. Um, and then we have a more complicated question, which is whether um, the white laxes are really white or the black laxes are really black, because um, it may turn out that they all have, for instance, the same genetic background, same rough percentage of um, African DNA. All of this leads us to the basic question, what is race? Is race real? And one important thing is that biologically speaking, race is not real. There are no, there's no set of unique genetic markers that all and only black people have or all and only white people have. There's no biological difference that is at all significant. Nevertheless, it seems really natural in cases like um, Lillian or Rachel Dolezal to say that people are really something other than what they say they are. And people will get really offended if, you, if a white person says that they are really black. So if the reality of race isn't biological, what is it? And that gets us to the uh, fascinating issue of social construction. So um, you've got one video and then an exercise and then another exercise that just asks the open-ended question about what kinds of things are real. And then we're going to read some Charles Mills on the social construction of race.